Also this morning, I want to talk about another success that has less to do with economic development and really more to do with looking out for each other. Some months ago, I had the honor of seeing off the soldiers of the 116th Brigade as they were deployed to Iraq. You know, it's a little overwhelming to stand on the tarmac and wish these uh, soldiers well when they face so much uncertainty and danger. I came back to the office and started a discussion with our staff and with other families of the troops. Uh, what can we do to help? That's why we uh, implemented a program we call Our Troops, Our Families. It's really reaching out with, in a special way with city services to help our military families. We had a PC day to make sure the connection to their loved ones which was as good as we could make it. Our IT department helped in that. We gave fire station tours uh, to families, especially to the young children. We had free day at the Boise Zoo for military families, the same at Idaho Ice World. And on July 9th at Ivy Wild Pool in the city of Boise, we'll also open it up free to military families to have a great summer day. We know there's nothing we can do to make up for their loved ones being overseas, but we wanna do all we can to make the time pass a little easier, especially for the young people. I'd encourage all of you in your business to help us out, to leverage our resources further, and to make uh, the weight these military families have just a little bit easier. <clears throat> you certainly know by now, our goal in the city of Boise is to make Boise the most livable city in the country. A livable city is a city that looks to the future. A livable city is one that innovates. This past year, I think a very important book was published. You can see it up on the screen there. The author's name is Stephen Johnson. He's quite a well-known author. He wrote a book called Where Good Ideas Come From. The subtitle is The Natural, Natural History of Innovation. He actually charts the history of invention from the beginning of time to the present. But the turning point for him was the creation of cities. He, he refers to cities as the engines of super creativity, where ideas connect with other ideas across different professions, and cities are the places where those connections are made the most. You know, we know that he's right. When software engineers and writers interact, when dancers interact with uh, firefighters or teachers, dare I say, when politicians talk to business people at breakfast, the pool of minds expands and the powers of those minds increase. Johnson refers to this place as the edge of chaos. It's the place where order and anarchy exist in a balance. Uh, it's a place that's flexible enough for new ideas to come about, but structured enough for those ideas to thrive. A great company strikes that important balance, and so does a great city. And when cities work, cities are able to withstand even the toughest economic times. That's been true not just of Boise, but Garden Sea and, and, and Meridian, CUNA and Eagle and Star. We've had our tough times, but we've all been able to see through them. Unfortunately, the, the same can't be said about faux cities called planned communities. You know, it's been tough on a lot of people. But if we've learned one thing from this economic downturn, it's that remote residential de developments located far away from cities and city services, that that's a flawed business model. I've been critical of leapfrog development in the past, but you know, nothing makes the case stronger than the marketplace. They make the point more dramatically than I ever could. 14 planned communities were circling the runway with thousands of residential units just a few years ago. Only two remain. Cities are our, presence, are our present, but cities are also our future. And cities work best when we focus on livability because livability gives us economic development and economic development brings prosperity. You know, we've been fortunate to receive accolades from a number of national publications over the last several years. But I don't know that any one of those mean more uh, than Outside Magazine naming us the best town. 
it isn't just that uh, we weren't just the top 10 or top five, we were the best town. And I think even more important was how they decided uh, that we were the number one place because their definition of a great city, of a livable city, is really the same as our definition. It's a third party that agrees with us. And I think increasingly it, is, it represents our brand, a brand that, that, that we need to work on over the coming years. Because they, they say you have an innovative economy, you have a housing market that's reasonable, you have arts activities uh, for a city of our size that's second to none, and you have recreational opportunities, and all of those aspects exist in one place close by. Like I said, I think increasingly that's our brand. We need to think about that and work on that over the next coming years to push that out uh, across the country. But you know, we had a fair amount to do with our being number one because they mentioned the River Recreation Park specifically. We were so pleased just a couple months ago to be able to say that thanks to the efforts of so many in these tough times, we have the first phase of the River Recreation Park fully funded. There are too many individuals and their generosity to thank, but I want to recognize the friends of the Whitewater Park who did important work in raising money. The Albertsons Foundation stepped up with two big important donations right, we, right when we needed them and this great city council. They stayed committed to this project in the, in the toughest of times and the success we will see. Vern Bisterfeld and his kayaking friends can get out on the river just a year from right now. So recognize all the effort, efforts and generosity that went into our success. <laughs> and this success is all the more impressive because, because it happened in the toughest of budgetary times. You know, uh, indeed the city of Boise has eliminated between 40 and 50 full-time positions over the last few years for a savings of between five and six million dollars every year. We may see some further cuts, but our focus has been and will continue to be on our customers, our citizens. We've kept city services at a high level. In fact, we're always looking to expand city services that give us good value. I'd like to point out uh, this is a glass crusher. Um, it is uh, new, it costs around $500,000. We were able to purchase uh, this uh, machine for only $250 from Mountain Home Air Force Base. For years, the citizens of Boise have wanted curbside glass recycling, but there hasn't been a local market for glass, and glass is really expensive to transport. There's a company in Boise called Environmental Abrasives. They're a great local company, and their uh, specialty are uh, materials that polish and grind in industrial applications. Their research indicates that glass makes a great raw material for their products. And thanks to the glass crusher, we can give them all they need. That's why I'm so happy to propose this fall, we're going to offer voluntary curbside glass recycling. We can do it, we think, for less than $10 a month. And we anticipate that that, that amount will come down as more people sign up and we find more markets for the glass. We're gonna dedicate the glass crusher with an appropriate beverage, sparkling beverage, the, in the next two months. And the great thing is, once we empty the bottle, we can just crush it. 